Hello everyone, welcome to Chats with the Farmer's Daughter. My name is Candace English. I am the Farmer's Daughter. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I It's been a couple weeks and I think the last time that I talked to you guys, I was going to St. Mary's, which I did and it was amazing and so beautiful and lots of family time, mostly family time, which was great. We celebrated Willow. Um, it was really fun. It was great to be with family. Um, and I got to sneak away even, and I went for a bike ride. I got a new e-bike, uh, which is really fun. And I love riding bikes. I hate riding uphill. I think it's like the worst. Um, I know it's good exercise, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't need, it's not my form of exercise is riding a bike uphill. So my e-bike, well, I can just turn it up to five and then go straight up and it's amazing. Um, and so I got to ride um, in from St. Mary's up towards going to the Sun Road, if you've been into Glacier. Um, and it was really fun. I went 10 miles in and 10 miles back out. So it was really, it was amazing and the views were great. It was so cool to, you know, I've driven that road a million times, but not, um, not on a bike. So it was cool to kind of get that, that vantage point. I am very scared of bears. Um, and so I was a little bit nervous about that. And I've seen bears in the wild many times, but my fear of bears is getting more prevalent. So um, it was good though, it was really fun. And then what else have we had going on here? Lots of work. Um, I've been working, we're moving. So I've been packing, we're just moving across town and getting a little bit bigger house. The house that we're in right now, my kids have really outgrown. Um, and I just have like this teeny tiny little galley kitchen and my house is old and we've been fixing it up for 10 years. And it's like, we're still, it's just, it's time just to get a new house. Um, I'm over it, I'm over trying to fix up like a cute little eclectic house. Uh, so that's exciting. And it's keeping me really busy. Um, between moving and trying to be really present here at the shop. And um, I have endometriosis, and so I've been having these massive flare-ups, um, which just suck, um, because I'm sure a lot of you have endometriosis too, or something like that, um, female, you know, issues that nobody seems to freaking be able to figure out. Um, so a little bitter. Um, I was actually supposed to have surgery yesterday and then my insurance screwed it all up and it was just, you guys don't really need to hear about this, but, um, you know, it's just, it's annoying, um, to kind of navigate. I feel like women's health a lot of the times can be really tough and I live, you know, in a more of a rural area. And so while we do have, you know, two bigger hospitals that serve rural areas, it's still not quite enough. So anyways, between, you know, kind of going through these flare ups and moving and work, I'm just like a little maxed out on my um, capacity of stress. Um, but I feel like I'm doing a really good job of just staying present in everything that I'm doing. You know, if I'm at home, I'm at home and that's what I'm doing. If I'm at work, I'm at work. That's what I'm doing. If I need to rest, it's okay. I'm resting. Um, it was my daughter's birthday last week. So I was like, okay, you know, on Thursday, this is what I'm doing. And it's really helped my mental health of not getting overly stressed. Like what, I just can't be stressed. Like what's the point? there's no there's no point it's not gonna it's not gonna help anything it's gonna make my body feel worse um so i'm just like moving moving through it it will be good it'll be good once i moved in um and settled and can kind of go back to this amazing regular routine which 
I've never really had in my life before and I got a little taste of it last year and so it's just like I'm excited I'm looking forward to it um, my you know nails are bright blue as you can see and that's just you guys know that that is so not me um, but this is like my <laughs> my stress coming out in a really really weird way um, I mean my nail gal does such a lovely job but why she let me like most of the time she's like mm -mm, no no you can't do that but she was like yeah do it it's 4th of July right I guess I do need to drink more water though I've been really bad about drinking water mm -hmm. um yeah so it was my daughter's birthday last week and we had Addie we had a she turned 13 which was so fun um and we had like a little day we did a, we went shopping and got pedicures and went out to dinner and then on saturday rented a hotel room for her friends and then we got an adjoining room and i got to be in the other one all by myself if you guys come to great falls and you want like a pretty nice place to stay on the river the stay bridge suites i think it's called is lovely i had it's just it's a really you know it's like a chain hotel or whatever but it's nice so um, i got a balcony and i just knit and i could not believe how much knitting i didn't accomplish like i thought i was gonna like be like you know get the whole sorry body of my sweater done um but no, I got like seven rows. It was crazy. Um, but I am working on my Calgo crop, as you can see. Um, and I can't wait to block it, mainly. Um, I have to knit five inches. It's releasing on Thursday or Friday. I need to knit five inches on the body and then do the ribbing. And then the sleeves are just like, I think just a couple rows. It's not bad. So I should be able to finish hopefully by then if I really concentrate in the evenings. But I also just told you all the other things I need. I dropped a stitch. Um, All the other things I need to get done and knitting I mean I could only do so much in a day though too right like at a certain point it's like I can't I'm not the energizer bunny I wish I was my sister's the energizer bunny she can go like all day I don't think it's good for her though so um yeah I mean I'm just I'm hanging on I think everything with Roe versus Wade is really a gut punch um it's very worrisome i don't post a lot about it i used to post more political things which i okay i used to post a lot more political things on um my social media and sometimes i still do post resources but personally i don't think a lot of the things i believe in should be political they are human rights um i don't think human rights should be political i know that they are um, but, you know, this whole, like, left versus right thing is just, um, it, it doesn't feel real to me. It feels like people are out there controlling both of these parties. People are out there controlling both of these parties, and it's just, um, I just want to make really meaningful action, and that can look really small and it can look really big. And I do a lot of that through Sisters United. So I don't post a lot about it because unless I'm actively doing something um, in a real life way, I don't want to contribute onto social media because I feel like that is the demise of our society. Um, demise, is that the right word? The downfall? Um, so... Yeah, if you know, if you've been following me for any time, you know how I feel politically. Um, politically, not politically, I don't know. Um, in life. I do think there's something to be said, you know, same with kind of the way I 
been talking about, you know, just not being stressed out and, um, in, you know, staying present in what is happening in the world of doing that too. And this is just me personally, you know, everyone is different, but I think that, um, making changes again in small and large ways in your life and not getting so stressed out where it's affecting you mentally I think is really important because that is a lot of the times what society is trying to do to women and um, black and indigenous and people of color is get them so exhausted that they can't fight. Um, and I think that there are some real things that we can do on a, you know, state level, hopefully. Um, so we'll see. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it because I'll probably get myself into trouble. So um, we can move on. I'm going to knit as much as I can in this episode because I, again, I'm on a deadline. This releases in just a few days. So I've got... I always measure with my thumb an inch I know is from this little crease right here to this right here oh, come on so that's an inch not including my big crazy witchy nail so I've got an inch and a quarter and I did that pretty I think I've just been doing that like I went to get lunch yesterday I knit for a little bit. I knit a couple rows last night when I got home. A row maybe. So I feel like I can do this. Um, okay, I'm really rambling. We're at 12 minutes. Just so you guys know, when I'm doing these podcasts, I'm just going to chit chat about myself first and then I'll get into the yarn. So if you don't want to hear about it, you can just move forward. Um, yeah. Okay, what I'm wearing, mm -hmm. I'm so excited about this. This is the Penelope tee. We had a sample knitter make this for us. And this is by Julie Robinson. And I'll link her socials and her Ravelry. Um, I think it's so cute. It is knit top down. There are, just so you guys know, there are um, supposed to be bust darts in this. We opted not to just because I didn't really feel like we needed them. But I think that maybe they might be beneficial to perk it out a little bit. Um, I'm wearing just like a, I'm not wearing a bra. Um, <laughs> so maybe if I was wearing like a perky or bra, I'm just like wearing a dress, you know? So my boobs aren't like totally, um, you know, held up. But the bust arts might be beneficial. Um, Cause I think it might like make you a little bit flat chested. Do we care? I don't know. I don't. I love it. I think it's cute. Even if my boobs look like they're, you know, my boobs should be like up here though. So I don't know. Um, and then this is made with Sue Copy is this right here. And there's different options for the neckline. Um, there's different options for the bust darts. It's pretty um, thorough pattern on having different options for you. And then, so this is Hacer and Sukapi, and this is Rosy Maple in Dyed in the Wool. And we have kits up, we'll have them up until Friday, um, Friday or Saturday. And so I can show you guys what colors we picked for the kits. Obviously, this is an option with the Rosy Maple and the Hacer. Um, and there's a limited amount because we only have so much thin cycle. Mm -hmm. um, and then this winter wolf, and there's three different sizes, I believe. So winter wolf and bruised ego together. So let me make sure it focuses for a little shun of a gun. There we go. It's kind of a sweet spot. Oh, no. 
And then I did these skeins of rusted rainbow were so pretty. This would be a really beautiful one for autumn or all year. Um, rusted rainbow and evergreen. And those will just pop through so beautifully in like the garter stripes. And then uh, Mississippi Marsala, which these skeins of Mississippi Marsala are very saturated. They're really pretty. Mississippi Marsala and Many Moons. So those will pop really nice too. There we go. Mm, oh yeah. So pretty. Um, I love, there is like, I'll just kind of get up closer, like the garter. And then I love the vertical lines too on them. I think it just makes all of the colors pop really well. Like if it was just, you know, garter without these lines, you're not going to see the hacer as much. But with it, I just, I love this tee. I think it's really, really cute. Um, if these colors aren't, you know, what you're looking for and you want, you know, you know you have a skein of spin cycle, um, that you want to use up or you see something online we can always help you guys you know pick something other than that um, our virtual shopping actually we've moved virtual shopping from monday through friday before it was just like wednesday through friday so now it's monday through friday a little bit longer hours on some days so you'll be able to have more options with the virtual shopping um and maybe we could even open up a saturday once a month or something like that too maybe not in the summer because we are a little busy on saturdays in the summer with farmer's market going on so um yeah the penelope tea okay what else um we also released last week our hand dyed embroidery thread these little suckers are a labor of love um this is the Fireweed palette. They come in nine to 11. Most of them have 10. There's a couple that have, there's one that has nine, there's one that has 11. Um, and they come in, yeah, packs of, you know, 10 mostly. Um, the reason that we did that and we didn't sell them individually is one, um, shipping, you know, can be difficult when we have just like a lot of tiny little things um and then also um it they are really a labor of love dyeing them isn't bad they're a bfl and silk um the wool that's in these is a bfl um which if you don't know what B bfl is it's a british um wool it is i don't know if i would say rare but it is only grown, the sheep are only grown and bred in a certain region in Britain. Is that right? I hope so. Um, that's for as far as I know. Um, and so maybe that's not right. Should I Google it? Hey Siri, um, I feel like it's rare though. And it's a really nice wool that's very hardy. Um, it's really great for socks. BFL for socks is amazing. Um, I just don't see it that often. You know, we can get it from our supplier, but other than that, I've never really seen it. So I'm going to say it's rare in the scope of wool of all of the sheep in the world. Um, and I know some of you are going to come after me about that. I could be wrong. Um, anyways, back to the embroidery thread. The BFL in silk makes it so it is really nice and strong. Um, there is a little twist to it. So it's a two ply. Um, these stupid, my stupid camera and then my stupid blue nails are so distracting. Uh, yeah. I am really excited about it. I used this palette and I used it on a pair of shorts, actually. Um, 
which was in our newsletter and I'll post about it on Instagram later this week. I forgot to grab them, but I embroidered these little cute, super easy flowers on um, a pair of shorts. So that's kind of a fun thing to do with it is embroidering on your denim. Uh, this one is the Bitterroot palette. And then this is the Goldenrod. I named them after um, flowers in Montana. Goldenrod. Well, I know you can get these flowers other places too, but all of these flowers grow in Montana. A black and white palette. I think this would be really cool for um, some like invisible mending. This is the, oh, come on. If my head wasn't so damn big. Um, this is bear grass. Oh, this one is the hawkweed palette. This one is actually selling really fast. Um, so the the dyeing isn't bad on it, um, but it's putting it on our reusable zip ties and then like unwinding it to put it on the reusable zip ties and then skeining it is crazy how long it takes. I mean, it takes longer than a full skein of yarn to do one of those little guys, like almost twice as long. Um, so, you know, they're, they're fine, but it's just a labor of love. This is the shooting star. So that's why we put them in bundles of 10, just because it, you know, makes it a little bit, oh my God, a little bit more worth it. Okay. I'm just going to put it right in front of my head. And then this is the Aster. I love these blues. So some of them are solids and then some are variegated, which are really cool to um, embroider with. Like, okay, so this one again is from the, just wanna make sure I got it right. Yeah, it's this one right here. This one's from the Fireweed palette. And this is our colorway Patsy on the embroidery thread. Holy shit, why is this taking so long to freaking focus on? Maybe there's a setting that I can do. Oh, speaking of, I didn't put my camera on. Do not disturb. Nobody better call me. Okay. So anyways, just embroidering with this gives it so much more dimension um, than just, you know, your regular like DMC. Even the solids, because they're semi-solids and they're hand-dyed, really, really fun. Um, so some ideas that I had, and I did, a, if you um, signed up for our newsletter, I did like a Pinterest board um, for like some ideas, but like doing flowers on denim, I saw some people do like little mushrooms above their back pocket, which I thought was super cute. Um, and then of course, invisible mending, um, and then traditional embroidery as well too, if you do those things. Um, and I was gonna tell you guys, these Montana Women magazines, um, which are only five dollars actually going up to seven dollars, but these all these old ones are five dollars The price of paper I guess has gone up a lot um, they always have a um, An embroidery pattern in it Megan Crawford who is the editor of Montana woman magazine um, She's awesome. She does like this magazine used to be um, Like it's based in the Flathead Valley, and so it used to be all like, how do I just say this? A lot of white women in turquoise um, who are not from Montana. Um, and so it was just a completely different magazine. And Megan took it and is writing about real women all over Montana. There's nothing wrong with women, white women wearing turquoise, by the way, it's just, a stereotype if you live in a western tourist town where there's a lot of very wealthy people who wear a lot of turquoise and are highlighted in magazines um, instead of you know the real the real deal so um yeah i just i love this magazine for five dollars for seven dollars now it's such a steal 
um, really thoughtful reads in there. And plus you always get a pattern. Um, so this pattern is Wild Goose Island in St. Mary's. Just drove past it on my bike ride. Um, and she gives you this so you can trace this out and then all the instructions on how to um, how to do your your pattern which is really easy because you're basically just making lines um, or stitching lines and she has like the DMC um, right here for normal DMC if it was me for this one I would use like a couple of different ones and this stuff too by the way I mean I did my shorts like I barely used any of it this will last you for so long so many crafting projects um, so that was, this is issue 20, no, issue 13. And then um, you could also use it for cross stitch too, the embroidery thread. Okay, this one is so cool. Get stitching. Um, oh wait, no, that's just an ad. Watercolor 101. So she gives you like, here is how you can um, do a watercolor scene. And then you can do said watercolor scene on, where is it? I just think this is so cool. She has this watercolor scene that she did on um, a cotton fabric, um, Kona, Calico, even cotton canvas will work. So she painted her like sky picture on, where the heck is the rest of it? There's more. I know there's more. Oh, maybe that's, maybe that's it. Like she, okay, so she's showing you how to do that. Here's all the instructions right here. Here's the finished product. Product right here is then she embroidered the stars and the constellation on top of it. I just think that is so cool. So this is issue 16. What's in 17? Mm. Sorry, my nose. Sinus pressure. I could flag these ahead of time and like be really, you know. Um, oh, this one's cool. A barn quilt inspired by folk art. Yeah, so she just has like a really pretty um, cross stitch in there or embroidery. She goes kind of back and forth. Um, yeah, so pretty. Those are just a couple of them. That's issue 17. But you don't have to use the DMC, like you can, you know, expand your mind and use hand dyed embroidery thread. Okay, I'm gonna set all of that aside. What else do we have new in the shop? Um, the Indigenous Collective. I wanted to show you guys the yarn, but I cannot find a single skein anywhere, um, which is, so sad, but I do have the picture that it was inspired by. Um, this is Tibetsti, 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 um, and this is by Mir Young, M-E-R-Y-O-U-N-G. Um, she is an artist out of California and just does really beautiful indigenous portraits. So this is what our indigenous collective was inspired by. Um, it's kind of hard to see because of the reflection. I'm right by the window here. I need to see all the shop, bummer. Um, but this like blue part right here is what it was, um, what we took out of it. 
and if you are in the indigenous collective there's a whole blog about Mir and about um, Tedesti and her story she is an amazing Apache um, warrior I think she's Apache she she fought with the Apaches but she might not be Apache but one of the tribes down there um, in what is now Texas so yeah um, I'm excited about July's uh, collective because it's bright and totally my colors um, and I'm excited to share with you the artist and the um, the picture and everything. I'm trying to choose and work with artists that maybe you guys have never heard of before. You know, there are some popular indigenous artists I'm sure you've all heard of. Um, so I'm trying to kind of pick like these artists that we just don't see as much. Um, and maybe you know them, maybe you don't. So I'm really excited. I don't want to give away too much. I will tell you that, oh my God, there is, you can always tell when, when, when there's been a, a run of drugs in town because it just, everyone is out here being really um, stoked about life and in about five days you're going to see people not being so stoked about life. It's really sad. Um, somebody just came by singing though. I don't know if you heard that. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, yeah, so July's Indigenous Collective. I'll give you guys one clue just because I wanna tell you everything, but it's going to be on Juicy DK because I really want these colors to be like really bright and vibrant and Juicy DK has like, holds our colors the best. Um, it's such like an amazing representation of our colors. So um, yeah, it's gonna be on Juicy DK and also Juicy DK is very versatile. And I know it's really popular. So some of you might have some in your stash that you could use with this skein or whatever it is. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, what else? I think that's it. Oh, you have two July 8th to sign up so you still got like a week if you want to sign up for the indigenous collective and make sure you get july's um and then reminisce i were releasing reminisce which is the same thing as recollect but it's just dyed on a white base and so i um i'm gonna show you guys the colors of that um it's 185 yards um, it's a non-superwash, 100% um, rainbow lay, um, and it is Montana and Wyoming um, sheep. So it's very local to us. Um, and when you're in the West, 500 miles is local. So here is, I didn't get time to put the tags on all of these because these were like our testers and just what we, um, I was kind of playing around with the palette. Um, so here is one with the new tags. Oh, they're so cute. I love that little Rambouillet sheep. And then it has FDF. And then on the inside of the, um, right here. This is what they look like. Um, there we go. There we go. Um, and then on the inside is all of the instructions. So basically hand knit, wash, and room temperature for best results. Testing first for color fastness. We recommend alternating skeins for a well-balanced result. Share your projects with us using hashtag the farmer's daughter so that's fun um okay this color right here let's see if i can get all the colors right too because they're not labeled this is not be um so we wanted to do reminisce because we were talking about like projects and stuff that we wanted to do and we're like oh, i wish that we could do like lulu on you know recollect or all of these different ones on recollect but um 
because it's gray, they just don't turn out. So this is Pacer. And these are all gonna be the colors that we have for now. Um, come and get your love. And if you haven't used Recollect, you should try it. Um, Mad Mardigan, this is a favorite. I was gonna use this in my next sweater, but I think I changed my mind. Desert Rose. Dumplin'. I'm just, it's funny because I'm used to seeing, you know, these on, like it's recollect. And so I'm like, sometimes I'm like, wait, what? Um, I'm so excited that Evergreen, which is one of my favorites, and Gary Cooper. Have I told you guys a story about Gary Cooper? He lived in Montana, he lived in Helena, um, he grew up in Helena. And um, I love Gary Cooper. My mom loves Gary Cooper, um, which is why I fell in love with Gary Cooper. But when he was in high school, he actually got kicked out of high school because as a prank, he put Limburger cheese on all of the radiators and stunk up the school so bad that they had to uh, like not be in school for X amount of days. So we had to go to school in Bozeman. He had to move, so. Whenever I see Gary Cooper, I think of Limburger cheese. Um, Lulu, which is so bright and fun. I love mixing this with some of like our neutrals and some of our, like just putting it in for like kind of a weird combo. I believe this is Sunny's, but it could be Shake A Day too. I knew I was gonna come into a couple that I wouldn't know. This is new. This is a new purple and we're gonna also do I want like a raspberry color if you've ever seen pictures of our couch upstairs like I'm trying to do that which is Namu but Namu does not turn out on the recollect it was super streaky so we couldn't do that so this is showing up much more dull I think in the camera and then bison princess so we'll have to name this one something. Um, Bear Gulch. Oh, I love this one. I just want a sweater just with this. Just Bear Gulch. Maybe a cardigan. And then Many Moons. And then just Natural. So that is Reminisce. We're gonna be ready to release everything on, sorry, um, that was rude, um, on Friday. So I'll send out a newsletter with all of the info. And, you know, honestly, if you checked on Thursday, it probably would be on the website. But we're releasing it in time for our steak along. Um, I've talked about it in the last couple of episodes and kind of, you know, gotten, um, oh boy, our friend's back. Um, uh, I've talked about it in the last couple of episodes. I wanted to grab something out of here to show you guys. Um, and it's gonna be really fun. I'm very excited. So basically I'm announcing it this week um, today and I'll announce it in our newsletter again on Friday, um, kind of in time for um, Reminisce to come out. And the Steak Alon, we're gonna start on July 13th and we're gonna go all the way till I think October 19th is the end date. Um, so it gives us a huge chunk of time to knit a sweater. Um, you know, it's nice to not have to be like, we're gonna get it done in two months or four days or whatever. Um, so I'm excited. You can use any pattern that you want. I have bundled um, pattern recommendations on Ravelry. Again, I have a whole blog of all of this information. So. If you get the newsletter, um, you'll see all of the links there. If not, then you can just look on the um, wool gatherers 
320 Central Wool Gatherers blog, I think is what our blog is called. It's on the website. And so I'll have all of that information there, but you can choose any pattern that you want. You can do, you know, a pattern, I bundled patterns that were specifically had instructions for steaking, just in case you hadn't done steaking before and you wanted a little bit extra instruction, but really you can do any sweater that you want. You just wanna put in a um, five stitch steak panel in the front, in the middle of your, um, sweater, your cardigan. And then when you're doing that, um, you can, that's where you'll steak right there. If you're doing color work, you could do like knit one row, um, you know, alternate your colors that you're using for your, um, your yoke, or maybe it's the whole body that is color work. Um, but you can alternate those colors and then that way you don't have, you know, these big long floats right there. So I'm excited. I'm not nervous. Um, I've watched a lot of videos. I'm going to, um, I'm going to link a lot of different videos and references because this is our first time steaking too. We're not like experts here. This is really like a collective thing that we're doing together. And so you will want to um, just make sure that you're doing your own research on the type of steak that you want to do. It's good to use a non-superwash yarn. I'm going to talk about all of our non-superwash yarns here in a minute. Um, but you can use something like Juicy DK. I've seen people steak with Juicy DK before. The only thing is that steaking reinforcement that you're going to want to do is going to have to be a sewn one. So a machine sewn steak on there versus just a crochet um, just because those stitches are so much more slippery than non super wash. So um, yeah, and you, you know, really steaking is nice for color work cardigans because then you can have, um, you can have that, that color work without having to do color work open, which I don't know how the hell you do that. I know that there's a way to do it, but sounds miserable to me. So it will be really fun. And then we'll have a video. We're going to, you know, we'll probably knit a baby sweater and steak that for a video or maybe steak it before a video before we steak our sweaters. So we are going to have our own video, you know, kind of showing you guys how we're doing it for the first time too. If you're local here, we'll have a day where you can, um, we'll have our kickoff party on July 13th. So if you're local, it's just on a knit night. It's, you know, we're just all starting our sweater together, basically, is what's happening. And then, so if you're not local, you're not missing that much. Um, and then, oh, I hope somebody might want to come in here in a second. Um, and then the, um, we will have a night in October where we all get together, where we can actually cut and steak together if you're local. If not, then... Um, again, you'll be able to see us do it and you can do a baby sweater. Um, we're giving, we're, we are doing a giveaway with this knit along. So it will be, um, it will be a $300 gift cards. Um, I shouldn't say, oh no, I don't want people to come in because I do want them to come in, but we're not open yet. And it's always awkward to be like, no, sorry. Um, a lot of times if I'm here and I'm not doing this, then I do let people in, but um, <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. So the, back to the steak along, um, three $100 gift cards to FDF. You can enter to win at the end. And if you do a baby sweater, it's one entry. If you do an adult size sweater, it's three entries. Um, just because it's more knitting, it's more commitment, it's more risk. Um, but honestly, you know, people are really worried about like screwing it up or like if you do something wrong, it, there are ways to fix things. So um, I don't think it's like, you know, it's not life or death here. We have to take some risks. It feels good. We'll be an adrenaline rush. Um, so I'm 
I've been going back and forth on what I'm going to knit. This is why I wanted to pull Ravelry up because I want your guys' opinion. Uh, and I want to hear what you are going to knit patterns. I don't understand, like my, my screen split though. How the hell do you make that go away? Big guy. No, I don't want two tabs. Empty tab group, no. No. Oh, private? No. What the heck? I really don't know what I've done. Like, why is this so hard for me? Oh, okay, go away. There we go. I just had to swipe it. It's usually like the easiest things. Okay, so I think maybe what I've settled on is the stone crop cardigan, which is in a fingering weight, and I wanna use Reminisce. Um, so I'd have to play around a little bit with the gauge, which I don't think is a, it's not a big deal. Um, also, Andrea knit this in Magpie's domestic fingering, which I, I've used before, and I know it's not a really like thin fingering, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But here is that. I'm like trying to. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen the stone crop cardigan. I've always wanted to knit this. Here are my reservations. I was with Andrea when she was knitting those bobbles. It just seems like a lot of bobbles. I don't mind knitting bobbles. Um, but I mean, I knit that our, our, our Busto sweater. That was all bobbles. Like if I can do that, I can do this. So maybe that's not so much of a turn off. Um, maybe it's that the whole thing is in color work, which is something I would wear and that I want, but like having the time to you know, it's like, I can get knitting done when I'm just knitting. Um, I'm just worried about time, I guess, for that, of not having a body where I can just knit. But look at the colors I picked out for it. It would be many moons. And then I found this absolute zero in my stash. And I just, I feel like I would wear this a lot. Like I would wear this all the time. And that's what really matters at the end of the day. You know, I can push through the knitting, but I know I would wear it a lot. The other thing I was thinking of, do I have that book? I need to, I think, order more of it. Let me just look it up. I was thinking about, I just had this idea. Um, okay, it's a pom-pom book. I need to look it up. Moon and Turtle. There is a sweater in this book that I really, why is it Moon and Turtle coming up? Moon and turtle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it this sweater? Oh yeah. Okay, but wouldn't this be a cute cardigan? And I could just do that sticking panel. And Rachel from Ritual Dyes knit this or had a sample made. I don't know if she knit it. And she's been trying to get me to knit it. Let's see if I can, uh, not cord, duh, cord D. Well, let's see what weight it is. I think it's a, war, it's an Aaron. 
Okay, this one would be good, but not right now because I really want to use Reminisce. I want a white one. I think I might, I think I'm just going to have to go with, this is the Cordy though, in case you want. Pishkin would be great for this. That one right there. I'm gonna write that down so I can link it for you guys. Okay. Cordy. All right. What are you guys, are you guys gonna do it? Are you guys gonna steak? What are you gonna do? I'm excited. I think it's gonna be really fun, um, especially when we're all cutting our yarn. Maybe we could, could we do a Zoom cutting party? I don't, it might be too much though for people. They might need to like be focused on it. I don't know. I'm excited. I just have to really commit to the stone crop. There's another one. Um, that I'll show you too. These are all in that bundle. Okay, well. This one obviously would be amazing for right now. I've been thinking about that, but I want a little bit more like, not so much this, more this, if that makes sense. But the descent would be very, okay, this one, and she has instructions on here. Um, Truvelle for a cardigan. I freaking love this. I think it's so cool. I just don't want like a super basic sweater, you know? So I love that, but it's just, it's a lot of colors and I don't know if my mind can come up with that many colors right now. I love that red, it look really cool on flower point. I don't know, I gotta think about it. Oh, I'll open here in a minute. Yeah. Um, I just don't want people coming in while I'm finishing. Okay. Um, yeah, so I want to know what you guys are going to knit. Maybe you have better ideas for me. But, but this is, I think this is where, what I'm going to do. So I have the yarn, it's just coming up with, I think I should just, I'll just do the stone crop. You guys get to go through all my creative process while I'm basically talking to myself. It's really fun, right? Okay, let's talk about non-superwash yarns and then I gotta wrap it up because I'm at 52 minutes. What, what have I been talking about? I was like, I'm, this is gonna be like a half an hour episode. I think I rambled. Well, I did ramble for the first 12 minutes of my life. I'm still sad that I don't have an indigenous collective skein. Like, how does that even happen? Um, okay, so non-superwash yarns that we carry, which would be great for the steak along. So starting with the thinnest weight is Sukapi. And Sukapi is a single ply. It is um, 248 yards for 50 grams. All of these colors are Ranch Romance. And all of them are 100% Wyoming and Montana Rambouillet. Some of them, the Recollect have, has the gray in it, a gray Rambouillet with a white Rambouillet. And so the um, mill that we get these from is in Wyoming. Um, they are amazing. They've been so good to us and they are very um, proactive about supporting their farmers. Um, we had to raise Recollect's prices because it um, the black Rambouillet was just too hard for them to get and they wanted to make sure that ranchers were getting paid the price that they deserve. Um, if you know anything about wool um, industry, it can be really tough. My grandparents were in the wool industry in the 50s and they ended up having to move to cattle and um, agriculture because it was too hard 
for them. Just the wool, the wool market is so difficult. So, you know, as wool lovers, I think it's really important that we support our wool ranchers and those who, you know, make sure that we're working with people who are giving them the best price possible. So that's why I really love um, our mill and Sukapi, moving on, um, is really lovely to work with when you first look at it in the skein. You're just, it, it's a little bit underwhelming, um, but it all of these have so much bounce and with the single ply of the Sue copy has so much bounce to it that it just is really fun to work up. Um, it's a fingering weight yarn. I don't know if I said that. Um, and yeah, I just, I love Sue copy. It comes to life when you knit it. It really comes to life when you block it. It just like blooms so beautifully. So Sue copy is one of my favorite fingering weights um and for a sweater it's very soft and it it wears really well over time you are gonna have to do a little bit of sweater care to it you're gonna have to um i use a gleaner to you know get all of my fuzzies off and stuff like that but for a single ply non-super wash it actually does really really well i've seen superwash single plies like that superwash single ply that you can kind of get um everywhere a lot of dyers use it i find that's why we don't dye it i find that stuff just um what is the word pills so badly like this pills a third of what a superwash does so um yeah really lovely not talking crap about the superwash single plies but i kind of am um, and if you've worked with it and if you've made a sweater, you probably already know that. So, um, and then we have Recollect and Reminisce. Should put a little label on her. This so she's pretty. I can't wait for everything to be labeled. It's going to be so fun. I'm very much into aesthetics that way. There we go. <laughs> Come on, bunny. There we go. Tracking lock. So this is fun too, because you can see um, Ranch Romance on both of these. And it's a sport weight, it's a two ply. Um, it is one of our best selling yarns. People use it and they love it and they just keep coming back and using it. For a sweater, um, you know, it's not, none of these are scratchy at all. Um, I don't think, and yeah, they don't have any like long fibers that are gonna make you itchy at all. Um, I will say Remin Reminisce and Recollect are probably the, in the skein, like maybe the least um, soft, but the way that it knits up when you're knitting it, it's just like a little cloud. And it also, blocks out really well but the sweaters that I have worn and made with it I feel like they have a little bit more structure than the Sue copy so it would be great for a cardigan right because unless you're like doing like a big long you know you want a flowy cardigan for me I like my cardigans like a little bit cropped and kind of um like a little bit smaller and more structured uh, so I would recommend this for sure for a cardigan, just because it does feel like it has more structure. Still soft. I mean, you're going to look at it in the skein. You might feel it. I, mean, I don't know. I just, maybe I'm not that sensitive, but I don't think it's scratchy. But all of these block out much more soft. Pishkin, I would say, is the softest. Once you block this out, it is like a sweatshirt. You know the um, kind of vintage sweatshirts and the inside of them and they kind of like, um, they pill a little bit. This doesn't pill like that, but I'm just trying to like, uh, ex like describe the inside of those, you know, like I can just imagine like these 70s sweatshirts where they're, 
um, you know, they're soft, but they have that kind of structure to them. That is what Pishkin feels like. And it is, again, really lovely to work with. It is also a two-ply. Um, Pishkin is, you know, we call it Pishkin DK, but really it's closer to a worsted weight. It's 255 yards. Most worsted weights are like 225. Um, and then a lot of DK weights are, you know, I don't know, 260 maybe, 270. Juicy DK is 285, 275, so it's lighter than that for sure. And because it does pump up so much. So definitely lighter worsted. So if you have a worsted weight sweater that you want to do, you can use Pishkin, just make sure you swatch it. So that is our non-super washers. So pretty. Love them. Um... I'm so excited we started dyeing these. I had a lot of reservations because when I first started dyeing, I did do a non-super wash. And, oh man, that, those were rough days. But um, we've got it down now. And thankfully, you know, Xander's very adamant on um, making sure that the non-super washes come out, you know, as consistent as possible. Um, but you will find variations in our non-super washes. Um, because of, you know, it, it just soaks up the dye differently. We use different techniques to help it soak up the dye um, a little bit better or at a slower process of that. But um, if you are doing, you'll look at your skeins, open your skeins up and look at them all to see if you think that you need to alternate skeins. But if there's variations within the skein, I would really recommend alternating skeins. I know it can be a pain in the butt. Also, why I might do the stone crop cardigan so I don't have to alternate skeins. It's always taking the easy way out. Okay, I gotta wrap this up, guys. Um, I wanted to tell you guys, I started watching this new show on TNT, no, not TNT. AMC, I know, something like that. It's called Dark Winds. Um, it is so good if you like um kind of spooky shows a little bit and like murder shows and all of that it is it's so good I think a new episode came out on Sunday but I thought the whole season was out me and Xander started watching it this weekend and then only two episodes and I hate that like I like to binge watch all of them I'll wait for an entire season to be done so that has been really good also I've been watching Stranger Things I again like I wait till all of it comes out so I re I went back and I rewatched season one through where we're at now the new season starts I think on Friday um not the new season second part of season four or five or whatever season we're on season four um I'm loving it I'm obsessed with Stranger Things right now and should we just do like 11 colorways inspired by Stranger Things? It's off brand, but do I care? I don't think so. Um, so those are the couple of things I've been watching. Oh, I also watched um, Stay Sweet, which I'm very intrigued. I've always been very intrigued with um, the LDS. Is it? No, it's not LDS. The fundamental... Um, Mormon um, situation and Stay Sweet was really good, really disturbing. Um, yeah, I have a lot of thoughts there, but I won't say those on camera. Um, and then I finished the sentence this morning, actually at like four o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep and it was good. I will say the, I wasn't expecting all of the pandemic stuff like to relive that and it, it was it got a little bit too much for me I was like I'm not I'm not ready to relive this trauma of the pandemic like I have a lot going on and I just don't really want to be in that space um but other than that I mean that's just a personal thing it was so good I can't believe the boyfriend was a werewolf 
the heck? What do they call them? A rugaroo? I've never heard of that. I mean, I've heard of werewolves, but a rugaroo? Now I'm like, hmm, gotta find out all about rugaroos. These guys could just be walking the streets. Um, so I need a new book and I pick, I started like a sample of a book, which actually is pretty good so far. I can't remember what it's called because it literally was like 4.30 in the morning. Um, but I'm looking for a book that is like a good summer read. It could be crime. That's fine. Um, nothing like no drama. I can't do it. I can't do any like deep trauma. So basically like no indigenous or black books. <laughs> I have to like have a palate cleanser there. It's just, it can, it just is too much. My throat hurts actually even like talking about it. Um, yeah, not that other people don't have trauma, but it's just in a way that I feel different. It's like right here, you know? Um, or right here, I guess. <laughs> so it's coming out right now. Uh, I don't know. You know, I read this book. It's called The Bookish Life of Nina Hill. Um, I love that book so much. It was just like, I just want like a sweet book where everything like, you know, might be a little bit rocky sometimes, but for the most part, it's just like very sweet and lovely like, you know, California sun and nobody's getting murdered and all of those things. Do you have a, do you have a book recommendation? If you've read The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, do you have any book recommendations that are like that? And if you haven't and you need a nice palate cleanser, that book is so sweet. And she also has a couple other books too. Um, so I don't know. You guys let me know. Uh, Next week, I'm going to come and do like a special podcast. I have the pom pom trunk show here at the shop and I want to show you guys everything. So it will be a little bit different of a podcast. I, that will be the main focus is that trunk show. And then I'll probably take a few weeks off. I'll be back at the end of July. We have our um, celestial countdown coming out. So I want to share with you guys about that. And by then I'm going to have lots of things to like talk about and share. Um, but I'm going to be busy. I'm going to the Missouri River Breaks with a couple of friends and their family. I'm very, very, very excited to get a weekend off. So not this weekend, but the following weekend I'll be doing that. And then I'll be moving. So um, yeah, I'll see you around on Instagram. But if I'm quiet, you know what I'm doing and where I'm at. So um, oh, giveaway this week. Oh, and I just wanted to say, so I haven't chose, I've chose the first two, four episodes. I think I need to go back and choose the last. I gotta look. I know I need to do last um, podcast episode. I try to wait until like I film the next one um, to let people catch up a little bit. So if I choose you, I'm just going to comment on your, um, I'm just going to reply to your comment and I won't announce it anywhere else. It, I mean, it, I'm just not going to, it's just too much to like, I'm not going to go on Instagram and, and do that. I'm just going to reply to your comment and then you can see that you've won. Um, you know, I want to be transparent with people, but I also don't feel like it's necessary to like announce it every episode, unless you guys are like, yes, you need to announce it. Then I'll do it. If you feel like it, if you feel like that's important. This week I have, come on. Um, I found these leftovers and this was from a collab that I did with um, Beautiful Sister. It was for a Sisters United collab and for some reason in the depths we found one more. So this is a Beautiful Sister bag. I love this bag because you can just stick your knitting, well, you can stick your knitting in it and you can hold it and you can sit there and knit. I always have one of these at shows. I always buy a new one when I'm at a show or do tradesies. 
Um, check out Beautiful Sisters stuff. I'll link them. Um, they're amazing. They do, they've done a lot for Sisters United and they're just amazing girls. And it comes with these little minis. So you'll get the bag, the minis, and then I have these eighth generation earrings by, well, actually they're John Pippian, but I got them from eighth generation. These beautiful magpies. Here we go. And I have these, I wear them all the time. They hold up really well. If you haven't um, seen or heard of eighth generation, check them out too because they're a great company. If you like um, Pendleton blankets, this is a great alternative because they're indigenous designed blankets. Um, they just do, they do a great job. So that will be this week's giveaway. You have to comment and subscribe. And I think that's it. Um, I feel like I was really rambly this episode. I might not go back and watch myself. Otherwise I might just delete it. But, you know, I, I can only do so much. I just have to be myself. Sometimes I'm a little more rambly than other times. So, uh, okay. I'll see you guys for the steak along. Tell me what you're going to knit. Give me all of your, give me your feedback. What do you guys think? What should I knit? What are you going to knit? What are you going to make with the embroidery thread? I can't wait to see people using this just because I'm not like mega into embroidery. Um, if I had time, I totally would be, but I know that there are embroidery people out there and I want to see the amazing things that you do with it. So, all right, peace out. Um, have a great 4th of July weekend. Um, enjoy your families and your friends and eat good food and you know maybe have some libations if you're into that kind of thing and uh, we're going to be here at Farmer's Daughter Fibers having a little potluck on 4th of July so if you're in town and you're not doing anything we'll be here from 10 to 2 just knitting potlucking hanging out there's a parade we can we're gonna have mimosas we're gonna watch the parade from inside so okay Bye, guys.